Here we are, small garden, 8th of September. Summer has finished, <laughs> sadly, and it's been a nice summer here. Not too hot, temperatures in the 70s, low to mid 20s mostly. Uh, but now autumn is cooler and this zone 8 climate, we are having mornings down to 7 centigrade, mid 40s Fahrenheit, which it is now, and daytimes high teens centigrade, low to high 60s Fahrenheit. And I can show you how things are growing through the summer and what we're looking to do next. So for example, the Swedes, which are here, rutabaga in American, are starting to swell nicely near to the shed. I think there might be some stones in the soil and things that have slowed down the growth, a little bit of light, but there are some nice sweet here potentially, and I've been keeping them tidy by taking off their lower leaves, which get more insect damage. If you'd seen them a month ago, you'd, you'd have been not impressed. They were, the leaves were full of holes. And we're coming to a time of year now when the brassicas, so that's like sweet cabbage and kale, for example, are looking so much more beautiful quality leaf because the insects are not eating them so much. And so if you can just get them through the summer, this swede had mesh over it, like the carrots do now, to keep the insects off. And we, we removed it at about a month ago. So they will just carry on growing until harvest from, say, November. The carrots here were sown between beetroot. So this was beetroot. And these were sown on the 30th of June. And I'm keeping a mesh cover on because of carrot root fly. So that's a fly that flies around, lays its eggs on the soil and the maggots burrow down into the carrot. And we thin these a little bit. Maybe could have thinned them a bit more, but if I pull one, I'll just give you an idea how they're growing. And it's not a long carrot because it's called oxhella. It's a short, stumpy one that gets very fat and wonderful flavour. We won't start harvesting these until as late as November. Whereas here we have summer vegetables, some little peppers that we've been picking. In this climate, the summers are not really hot enough to get worthwhile amounts of pepper and aubergine. <laughs> it was, I was growing them in a way more out of curiosity just to see. And the aubergine there, for example, um, I've picked maybe four medium-sized aubergines. So, if, you know, if you want a lot to eat, they're not really worth it, but fantastic just for something different. Whereas the tomatoes, you can see, are doing pretty well. They're they don't need such high temperatures as peppers and aubergines. And this is a variety called Crimson Crush, which is supposed to be blight tolerant. Uh, well, it is blight tolerant. I'm not sure to what extent though. But having said that, you can see they're all healthy. We haven't yet had late blight here on tomatoes. So they're starting to crop really strongly. They've been better actually in uh, the last week, so early September than they were even in August. And We've got sun gold and a variety called dorada at the back. So that's orange and yellow cherries. And we have picked already three kilos of tomatoes here. So they're starting to give a worthwhile amount. This area was French beans. And we did a last pick just a few days ago and then cut off the plants at soil level uh, to leave the roots in. I'm always looking to leave roots in when clearing plants. And then we planted spinach. This is home safe seed mostly here, actually. Finished sown a month ago in modules, planted there three or four days ago, and that's looking fine. And before planting the spinach, I spread some homemade compost. So I'm putting compost on these beds once a year, whenever is most convenient. This spinach, all being well, will be here until next May, even early June. So I wouldn't have any opportunity in the winter to put compost on, so I put it on now September. This garden is, is just compost fed. I'm not using any feeds or fertilizers. It's snow dig, so it's very simple to maintain. There are not many weeds. I hardly do any weeding here. Just pull out the odd one in passing really. The kale here, I pop them in between carrots and they're now really coming into production. So we're harvesting outer leaves like that. It's a very nice vegetable to grow. When you get nice big plants like this, you've got ongoing harvest for many months. This, this could keep going until next spring, depending a bit on pigeons <laughs> and weather. You can see that I don't have pigeons at the moment, otherwise I would have to put a bird netting over it. One thing we are doing though, is we're spraying Bacillus thuringiensis soil bacteria. You can buy it as a dry powder <clears throat> on eBay in the UK. 
and you spray that on uh, about every 18 days and it makes the leaves unpalatable to caterpillars. Well, in fact, if they do it, then they get indigestion. <laughs> so they then they die basically. Um, but it doesn't affect any other mammals or insects. Here we have some lovely endive, frizzy endive. This is the sort of salad bar at the moment. And the endive, we're taking off the outer leaves. And same with the lettuce. These are all planted uh, late June, July. And the lettuce, some of them are, have gone out to flower, like this one is a uh, little gem, final pick coming up this week. Then we twist it out. And in between, I've planted fennel, coriander, and dill. So the coriander and dill are for harvesting soon. And the fennel, which was sown late July, planted here late August, it's just starting to get established now. It started off very small. It's, it's a nice plant fennel for that. It's not really in the way of anything. And then suddenly we'll twist out the lettuce soon when they finish and you'll get a nice growth of fennel. The carrots here were sown about 11 days before those ones. And again, it's oxella. And just that 11 days made quite a difference there. They are quite a bit bigger. I won't pull one of these, but I can see nice broad shoulders there. And I thinned them once last week, actually. Uh, just took out a few. Mostly though, I'm sowing just by hand, dribbling out the seed between finger and thumb, <coughs> dropping in seed carefully. And with a bit of practice, you can get to do that with not needing too much thinning. In the final bed here, we have chicory following onions. So there was this lovely harvest of red onions. We have eaten a few actually, there, there was almost a full crate around three and a half, four kilos, eight pounds of onions. Uh, these were multi-sown red ones, lilla. And I also took quite a few from the clumps as spring onions. Two kilos of spring onions, in fact. And the onion harvest happened in late July, early August, when I then planted these chicory, which are for radicchio hearts. So they will make a tight heart of round ones, and also we have the long Treviso chicory. I did make a video about growing chicory. If you're interested in growing them, it's worth a look because they're not very well known, especially in, in the UK, I find. And people are afraid of their leaves being a bit bitter, which they are, but if you get a nice heart, that's self-blanching and they become bittersweet, basically. The leeks here, I'm really pleased with their multi-sown. So sown on the 5th of April, in modules in the greenhouse. Four seeds in a clump. Uh, usually we end up with two or three actually good leeks per clump. They were planted in the middle of June after clearing spinach and we'll be coming up to first harvest pretty soon. I could pull one out now just to give you an idea of how they are. I'm taking one out here from a clump of four. They're easing them out without disturbing the other ones. I'm using my knife to cut the root a bit. And yeah, this is coming well. So there is, I've taken a bit of the other one. Um, the leek, I've been tidying up the lower leaves because of rust and keeping the rust at bay. And you can see that, oh, actually that one has got a little bit of damage. Now that's interesting. I hope that not too many will have that. This is something leeks are a bit prone to actually. Um, a little bit of rotting in the stem. But if I take that off, you can see there's still basically a nice leak there. I mean, they, they will grow some more, so I'm not really looking to harvest them yet, but I'm just pulling that one out to give you an idea. And what we'll do is we cut out the biggest one from each clump each time we come, so you get repeat harvest. And the beetroot here followed potatoes. So this was early potatoes, Casablanca, around six and a half kilos in early July. And then straight away we popped in multi-sown beetroot. And this corner's a little bit, uh, I think the, <laughs> the neighbor's hedge is competing a bit, feeding roots in. And um, we've also got the beetroot are in competition a bit with the perennial kale here, which has become quite an item as you can see. And this also is, is giving regular harvests of outer leaves. You twist them off from the bottom. So altogether we've had here so far this year around 120 kilos of vegetable harvests that's um, all trimmed and ready for the table um, so it's, it's very productive small space 25 square meters just to give you an idea of what you can do and I'm not worrying too much about rotation I'm usually leaving about a year between plants of the same family and I keep popping in plants as they come ready so I'm 
Also doing a lot of propagation of plants to have them ready to fill the gaps. Thank you.